You voted for it, so I'm reviewing it. The NHD15 from Noctua. Is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I release new videos every week on PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. So if you end up liking this video, can you please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel? It does help out a lot. As always, I will have timestamps down in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you. But as always, I recommend you watch the whole review. Okay, the Noctua NHD15 can be bought on Amazon.com for 100 USD. There is also the Noctua NHD15S, which sells for 90 USD. Both of these coolers can be bought in black for a 10 US dollar premium. Now I have the NHD15 here, but I'm also gonna be testing this cooler with just the one center fan. So I will be essentially testing both the NHD15 and the NHD15S. So let's see what you get in the box here. There is the heatsink and fans, of course, mounting hardware for both AMD and Intel. There is the assembly instructions for both AMD and Intel as well. A second set of fan clips for the second fan a small tube of thermal compound. They do include a PH2 screwdriver. There are two low noise adapters and one Y cable. Okay, taking a closer look at the heatsink, the D15 is a dual tower cooler with six six millimeter continuous heat pipes. Both the heatsink and base are copper while the tower fins are aluminum, but the whole cooler has been nickel plated. Now for the fans, the model is NFA15 the max rated RPM is 1500 with a minimum rated RPM of 300. It is a seven blade design and it has Noctua's SSO2 bearing. So that's the self stabilizing oil pressure bearing. And both of these fans have a four pin PWM connector. So Noctua says the dimensions of this cooler with the fans attached is 165 millimeters high by 155 millimeters wide by 161 millimeters deep. So based off these dimensions, I'm pretty comfortable saying if your RAM has heat spreaders, you're gonna have RAM clearance issues. And this is because Noctua only gives 32 millimeters of RAM clearance, which is pretty much a joke. So my dimensions when testing this cooler were 175 millimeters high by 150 millimeters wide by 161 millimeters deep. So much different than what Noctua is claiming. Now with that out of the way, the socket compatibility for the NHD15 is most of Intel's mainstream lineup. It also supports Intel's HPC lineup. And the box I had did actually come with the LGA 1700 mounting hardware in the box, so I didn't have to contact Noctua. For AMD compatibility, it's compatible with AM3 and AM4, which means it will be future compatible with AM5 because AMD did confirm that AM5 will be the same as AM4. Okay, moving on to how to install this CPU cooler. I will be installing the NHD15 onto an AM4 motherboard. Now, if you're installing the NHD15S on an AM4 motherboard, it will be pretty much the exact same of, as what I'm about to show you. But installation between Intel and AMD sockets is quite different. So if you are planning to install this on an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. Now, as always, before you start, Make sure you have a clean, flat, and sturdy surface. You should have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You can use the included PH2 screwdriver, but I will be using my own. You will also need the back plate that came with your motherboard to install this onto an AM4 socket. So start by placing the back plate under the motherboard and align the holes on the motherboard to the back plate. With the motherboard flat, place the gray plastic spacers over each hole, then find the AMD mounting bars and mounting screws. Place the mounting bars onto the plastic spacers. On the mounting bars, find the holes that are labeled for AM4 and put the screws through them. Align the mounting screws with the back plate, then screw the mounting screws into the holes on the back plate, making sure the mounting bars are facing in. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off your CPU and the cold plate of the cooler with some isopropyl alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now, before going on to the next step, you will need to remove the fans from the heatsink. 
It would also be a good idea to install your RAM as well before going on to the next step because it will be very difficult to install the RAM once the cooler is in. With the fans off and your RAM installed, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the screws on the fastening bar. Then screw in the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once you're done, you can reinstall the fan or the fans onto the heatsink and then plug the PWM connectors of the fans into your motherboard. You can also use the Y cable to plug both fans into one fan header and we're done the installation. Now before getting onto the temperature testing, I also did a PWM range test on the fans. So at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 1600-ish, and this has the cooler's DBA at 36.5. When I drop the PWM down to zero, the fans actually stop, so there is no RPM. Now these fans kicked on at 10% PWM, but the motherboard isn't showing what the RPM is. So I broke out the tachometer and actually took a manual reading, and the RPM is 215. And of course, this has the DBA of the cooler at or below my nose floor of 32 DBA. Okay, with that out of the way, on to the temperature testing. Now, if you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of the CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above and I'll also have it linked down in the description. And again, just as a reminder, as I said before, I did test the NHD15 with just one fan. So I'll, I will be showing the NHD15 and the NHD15S in these charts. So the NHD15 in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test had the CPU temperature at 70.9 C. And for the NHD15S testing, having one fan maxed out actually didn't really make it up to 35 dba the dba was only at 34.7 which still actually had the cpu temperature at 71.6 c so it performed very well but it's actually below all these other fans in dba and when i turned the nhd15 to max fan speed the temperature went down to 70.6 c so no real difference here between the full speed and the 35 dBA testing. And again, the D15S was already maxed out, so it still has the same temperature of 71.6 C. Okay, moving on to the 150 watt testing. When the D15 was noise equalized to 35 dBA, the CPU temperature was at 75.1 C, which has it topping the chart. And the D15S has the CPU temperature at 76.8 C, which has it tying the freeze mod custom loop. Letting the D15 run at full speed doesn't really change the temperature all that much with a temperature of 74.9 C. So what do I think of the Noctua NHD15? It did perform very well in my testing. It actually topped most of the charts. And on top of that, it does actually come with a six year warranty, which is really nice to see. So you do get a premium product with a premium warranty, but that does come with a premium price tag. Now the D15S's performance is impressive, but it only costs 10 US dollars less than the D15. So it doesn't seem all that practical to me because the A15 fan is 24 US dollars. So I don't really understand why the D15S is only 10 US dollars less than the D15. I would think just buy a D15 and you have the extra fan if you ever need it. Now, I'm not even entirely sure if the D15 is worth the price because if you compare the D15 to say the Assassin King 120, which typically sells for around 40 US dollars on amazon.com, so that is a 60 US dollar price, you have a four Celsius difference in the 150 watt test. I'm not sure if four Celsius is worth 60 US dollars. That 60 US dollars can be used for something else, a better GPU, a better case, something. Like 60 US dollars is a good amount of money. So as I just said, I'm not sure if the D15 is really worth the price. Now, if you really do wanna get a D15 so you can just flex on your friends, please just make sure your case can fit it first because as I showed, like, 
as far as I can tell, Noct was lying about the 165 millimeter clearance on that because unless you have no heat spreaders whatsoever, it's not going to be 165 millimeter. Like who doesn't have heat spreaders on the ramp? Like hands up, like Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Unless you're in a server, you're going to have heat spreaders. I, I, there are a very few people that don't, but I don't think they're going to be spending 100 USD on a cooler because they had to buy like budget RAM. Well, that's all I got for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. The link is down in the description. It is completely free to join. You may also want to check out these videos here. They should be along the same lines as what you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.